All right, so welcome to the Teaching Controversy Toolkit. Um, these tools that I've compiled are going to try to work to help me figure out what is it that I need to know to do this effectively. What do I need to know to teach controversy effectively within the classroom? So number one, the question that I wanted to ask um, or that one should ask if trying to teach controversy is, am I informed about the issues that I want to teach? So as teachers, we need to make sure that we are gaining a deeper understanding of the issues that we want to tackle in the classroom in order to move past biases that we might have and gain um, new perspectives and kind of nonpartisan perspectives as well and gaining more knowledge. Um, and I wanted to do this by using reputable or nonpartisan kind of um, historical based websites or news sites that we can go through. And so here are some of them here. Um, the New York Times has a really cool subsection of their site. It's called the Learning Initiative, and they have a ton of learning um, resources like lesson plans. Um, if I wanted to tackle the topic of immigration, they also have a um, they have a, a, an immigration uh, map kind of that shows the trends in immigration that have uh, taken place over the past uh, so uh, several years. Um, and then they also have a lot of different um, op-ed articles. So they're a little bit more, they're opinion based. Um, and so you can kind of, they're not leaning to the right or to the left. So you can kind of go through these and um, pick which wherever one you want. You can bring articles to class and have students kind of go through those and see, um, you know, comp kind of compare and contrast various uh, articles. And so this article, I glanced, um, kind of went through it a little bit. Um, and I think this would be really awesome um, because you can kind of take out some of the facts and kind of, you know, set those up, you know, if you wanted to do a some sort of debate, whether in class or something like that, to that effect. Um, then also, I also found another really, really cool site. It's called proandcon.org, and this would be awesome. Um, so what you'll have is you in the search bar, you can type up a topic and in this example I've typed in immigration and what they'll do is they have a number of articles that you can read or you know grasp and here the question is should the government allow immigrants who are here illegally to become US citizens so you'll go down and you'll read a lot of what it's saying so some people here say that illegal immigration benefits the US economy through additional tax revenue expansion of the low-cost labor pool and increases money in the circulation while the opponents of illegal immigration say that the people who break the law by crossing without proper documents or by overstaying should be deported and not rewarded with a path to citizenship so if you go down here they have a number of ways you can break down this question um, and so this would be a pretty useful tool to use within the classroom um, to kind of get students minds thinking um, about these themes before you go into it and if I was wanting to do something like have students present their sides of a case let's say I set my classroom up in kind of a, a presiding court kind of style then I could do this because there are different sides that you're getting to see through the um, through the classroom discussion so they have different questions as a legal immigration and economic burden or how is illegal immigration and globalization related and different tax questions and once you kind of scroll down here you can kind of see where they split the arguments in half so top 10 pro and con arguments and so here you see that when you scroll down they have an overview they have a different um, a list of different things that um, come up when you're talking about these topics um, and then they have them juxtaposed one by the other so you can kind of see what different people are saying and students can kind of get their own perspective by seeing the pros and seeing the cons um, of this issue so you can scroll down um, and see here you have economic security so a pro of economic security so legal status would boost the economy so by providing people with um, who came here illegally with citizenship um, it could put more money into the pool um, so different things like that you'll see and you can kind of scroll down and see um, what 
that looks like and they have a ton of other resources too for a ton of different other topics so if you were looking to want to do something like that that would be something that you could do and also another website was called um, all sides and so I thought this was super cool um, because it tries to make sure that you're you have the option to hear news from the right the left or the center so if I want to be informed I want to make sure that I'm not necessarily putting my um, my own views on the chip on the youth on the students but giving them um, sources from the right from the left and from the middle so that they can kind of make their own um, decision on this so here you see different articles from the left so more of the democratic kind of um, viewpoint from the right and then from the center all right <clears throat> so these are some kind of cool resources that you can bring and um, kind of get your students thinking about these topics in a variety of ways which is awesome it's awesome all right so the second tool that I've compiled in this toolkit would be knowing whether or not if I'm adept at facilitating classroom conversations in a safe way and so I need or we need as teachers anyone who wants to do this needs to be able to utilize various methods of discourse or hands-on kind of uh, interactive classroom experience activities that can effectively break down contemporary hot topics controversial topics for students to help them kind of safely share and formulate their own opinions and so here I'm going to pull this up here um, and so in trying to find this I actually looked up <clears throat> um, different people who were kind of in the same realm of teaching com controversial topics and I found a really cool uh, Facebook page um, it's a lady by the name of Michelle Luck and she has a blog where she has a lot of tips and tools that you can use to kind of get your students talking about these issues in the classroom so I reached out to her sent her a message and she sent me a couple of links um, as I told her I wanted to you know kind of get myself involved with this as well and kind of go along and see um, how you know this would work and so here on her blog if you were to type in If you were to type in in the search bar different kind of topics or con the the catchphrase or the phrase controversial topics um, you would find a ton of different articles and I found a, a lot to sift through um, but here she's kind of just explaining like these issues are important and the um, why they kind of need to be taught so that you can kind of get students um, exposed to a lot of different ideas um, that's what's going to help them grow if you're if your goal is to kind of get them engaged in democratic um, education um, and so you want to create a safe space uh, different tips that she line, lines up analyzing images so to kind of get students thinking about um, these topics you know what kind of emotions they might be feeling through analyzing images um, and I thought this was really cool um, as I had actually just came off of doing an interactive experience um, in my class where I had students um, come to Ellis Island and so basically we partnered with a Spanish class and history students were coming to Ellis Island and the Spanish students were asking them questions and there was no English involved um, and so that they were they were kind of stuck and they could kind of get themselves um, in that experience and kind of see what it would be like um, to be within that kind of space and not knowing so we wanted to give students a, a, a taste of what it would be like coming to a different uh, place and not knowing the language and kind of they won't really know what it's like you know you can't really connect to a situation unless you have lived some kind of version of it or something um, like that so she has a lot of different tips and tricks that you can use so different types of questions uh, tips and tricks uh, for the middle and high school classrooms um, so the big paper activity so what you'll have is a huge sheet of paper and then you kind of just go around walk around and see there are prompts on the paper you can kind of go around and see what that would look like students will be answering and kind of expressing themselves um, through writing etc etc um, and then you also 
um, want to make sure that you are um, trying to to make sure that these students are doing what they can to. I, I think going back to the first tool, once you're bringing in um, these different articles as well, because it's coming from a kind of a factual perspective, it'd be less. Um, I feel, you know, it might be less heated because people aren't just coming with their opinions necessarily, but they're coming with facts. And so that might, you know, allow for um, a safer space as well, because it's not just um, people just coming straight up with um, however they feel or are going off of an emotional basis. Um, and then so, so the third tool within this um, would be how can I continue to get actively involved? And so as a teacher who wants to promote the discussion of controversial topics in class, I need to be able to engage um, within this discourse outside of the classroom through online resources like online forums and even Facebook groups like we've seen um, when I was able to reach out to Miss Michelle and kind of get some feedback from her um, where I can kind of share ideas that I have about teaching hard history or controversial topics. And also through these, I can gain new perspectives and ideas from others. And so if my goal is to make, you know, um, controversial issues or controversial topics real for students, um, I want to be able to get them, you know, in that experience as much as possible. And if I'm wanting to, um, as I'm, <clears throat> these groups will be kind of really beneficial because they'll help me to kind of contribute because I'm also sharing what I know and what I've, you know, been experiencing in the classroom, doing these activities with students, but I can also hear back. And so even as I continue to go through the profession and continue to grow in my um, knowledge, even as a pre-service teacher, I've even been thinking about creating um, maybe, maybe a teacher page for myself and kind of getting that out there and trying new ideas um, and kind of recording those and putting those out there if possible and kind of getting feedback and kind of get that circulating um, through the web and trying to see what other teachers might be saying. I also found another really, really cool resource um, called the History or the Education Forum. And so this is cool because you can kind of scroll through and you can kind of type in different different topics here and then you'll see um, different people are kind of saying different things and you can kind of click on the forum and post your thoughts some of these are a little outdated so you'd want to get some more of the um, the most recent ones um, but I can post things and kind of see what other people might be saying as well and maybe trying out some of their ideas and just um, getting out there and so this will help because um, I, I would be advocating for the teaching of these topics and sharing my um, results and my views. So if I were to teach a, a, le a lesson segment, then I could kind of share what the outcome of that was and get feedback from other history teachers and maybe see what's out there that I can do to implement um, that would help to better my teaching. Um, and I think that's also just how you're going to continue to grow um, as you're hearing from others in the field and the discourse who have more experience. Um, and that's really how a lot of the growth um, can continue to happen as well. So that is, that concludes my toolkit.